Hello everyone! So today it's a bit of a different video because it's not really a tutorial. What it is, is a free plugin. Now I've been working for many years now on different ideas to make uh, workflows better in Cinema 4D. And uh, one idea I had a long time ago actually materialized uh, recently with the help of um, some people that do some free work for me. Uh, it's always good to get some free work done. Anyway, um, I did compensate them uh, in more, uh, let's say, moral way. I'm Greek, I always have something wise to tell you. So if you have any questions, as usual, keep them to yourselves. And uh, let's proceed. The plugin is called Edge to Spline and it actually takes edge selections, polygon edge selections, and converts them in real time, procedurally, into splines. And then you can use that to do anything you want. It's live all the time, so it updates, and uh, I'm going to show you some examples, and then I'm going to show you a couple of ways you can use it, and you can download it from the link in the description below. So that's my present for me. Let's get into the tutorial. So I'm running Cinema 4D release 21, but the plugin should work in uh, releases uh, 19 and up. Now, mind you, it's a Python plugin. It is open source, MIT license, which means you can see the code, open it, uh, change it, I don't know, resell it if you want to be that person. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can use it freely for commercial, non-commercial purposes and uh, I have, or no one else for that matter, any responsibility if your computer explodes or your house burns down or you're suddenly in some sort of quarantine because of a pandemic. So we take no responsibility. Now let's go in this uh, empty scene and um, I'm going to just add a sphere and turn it into an icosahedron. For the reasons I've told you in the past, it's one of those words that I can say easily and you cannot because I'm Greek. And uh, I turned on my display grow shading line so I can see the topology. And uh, if you go to the extensions, you will find the Edge to Spline plugin. And the easiest way to use it is you make any object, any mesh object, procedural or not, a child of that. Now, it may not be visible because I need to turn this off it's created a spline from all the edges. So this is the easiest way you can create some sort of wireframe shader just by adding, let's go and add a sweep, let's add a an n-sided, let's make the n-sided quite small, 0.5 in radius, and now remember, this now is a spline. So I'm gonna put it here and put this in between, and here, if I render, we have a little wireframe and the circle underneath, I can turn it off if I wish to do so. So this looks fantastic. Now, a trick you can do with this uh, first application, because there are other ways to apply the plugin, is the following. If I go and create a material, double click here, standard material, drag it on the sphere, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the material editor. I'm going to go to the alpha channel. I'm going to turn everything else off and turn on the luminance and put a nice little blue color. And uh, actually, I'm going to make it pink because a very good friend of mine is really irritated with um, the types of reds I'm using. So it's not pink, but anyhow, uh, it will anger him slightly. Go to alpha channel, add a color shader, and let's make this slightly transparent ever so slightly transparent. And now if I render this, what will happen is the transparency is making the lines fade a bit in the background. So you can create this interesting, let me make it a bit more opaque, and there you go. We see those lines right on the background, so we can make nice little domes. And because it generates geometry, it will be consistent across different renderers. So, um, I think I do have a scene. I'm going to attach a zip file with a few sample scenes for you to open and see all the shenanigans you can do with this plugin. And uh, let's continue. So, the simple way is to just drop any mesh object underneath and it will generate a spline without actually modifying this. Now, I can go here and put any deformer I want. It won't uh, break anything. Uh, the spline will conform to whatever the shape of the mesh is. Excellent. So let me get rid of all this 
except for this. I'm going to I'm going to leave this under here because I'm going to show you another way of doing this. You can select the edge of the spline and in the object tab you have an object link. So you can do this. So you can link it outside the hierarchy. Fantastic. Now there's one little switch here that says override type because by default the edge to spline command which by the way so that you know if you are into the coding stuff if you go to mesh and you find the edge to spline conversion edge to spline this plugin is nothing more than a real-time application of this command so by default anything this command does it should happen when you use the plugin but we have added a bit more functionality to it so by default the spline is a linear spline but we are going to override the type and make it for example an akima and add some rounding so you can create more interesting shapes great i don't know how you're going to use this or if you're going to break it but that is not my responsibility so i'll turn it off and continue on the path of least resistance so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select my sphere I'm going to increase this to let's say 32 and I'm going to make it editable the reason for that is I'm going to turn all these off I'm going to go to my edge selection mode and I'm going to select some edges and I'm going to go to the select menu down here set selection and we've created an edge selection what I can do here is I can tell the edge to spline that the sphere is the object and the edge selection is the selection I want to use so anything that's in this edge selection will become the spline if I render this you see it works fantastically now in certain cases just so that you know in certain configurations where things become a bit more complex it may refuse to render in the viewport and uh, that is something that's been looked at but you can always render in the picture viewer and it will give you the render it's going to do so instead of viewing in the viewport you can render in the picture view and see what it's going to do I apologize but as usually it's not my fault now the other thing I can do is that because the edge selections have field functionality I can use fields I can go to the fields tab get rid of mr. freeze and let's go and add here a spherical field and now when I go to my model mode and get my move tool you can see that the fall off is generating these splines so I'm going to undo once select this make it smaller I'm gonna go here excellent I'm gonna go back to my edge selection I'm gonna go and add for example a freeze layer and make it max and I'm gonna set this to grow and I'm going to rewind press play and now we have those splines growing I can make my radius 15 and rewind press play and there you go we can make these splines cover whatever shape we want let's see what else can we do here besides using the edge selections I'm going to do a double edge selection thingy so I have the edge generated by this and I think I'm going to show that to you in a new file I'm going to go and create some text that says text then I'm going to extrude this and the extrusion I'm going to do actually is going to be the following go to the object and set this to zero so I'm just creating one face shall I change typeface I won't because you are artists and you hate this simple Helvetica so I'm going to leave it there now let's go to the raw shading lines you can see that these are n-gons as indicated by the extrude generators caps cap types n-gons I'm going to set this to regular grid and in the regular grid I'm going to change uh, either the size to make them smaller or I'm going to set this to Delaunay now in order for the Delaunay to go and uh, make more complex patterns we need to add more segmentation to the spline because splines by default are adaptive which means straight lines are always straight just switch this to subdivided and add some subdivisions by making these numbers smaller I think I'm gonna go and make this bigger let me change this okay okay I'm gonna change it so let's use uh, this there we go looks a bit more interesting 
Now we have all these subdivisions, and these are edges, which means that if I go to extensions, bring up the edge to spline, put this here, make it invisible, now we have a spline that has these shapes. And because it's a spline, what I can do is extrude it. And look at this. You have this weird honeycomby without being honeycomby shape. And because I'm using this generator, I can go and create an instance of this generator. This instance now, of course, it's invisible. And I can do the opposite if I wish to do so. I can put this here and take this out. I can make this invisible. Then I'm going to take this and pull it back. Great. Maybe pull it back even more. Good. And then go select it. And let's add some depth. Look at that. So now we have a more interesting setup. Did I break it? Let me move this back. There we go. I did the wrong one. But you can see now that we have something on the back and something on the front. Look at this. Very interesting indeed. So that's another example of what we can do. And the funniest thing, it's not really funny, it's actually quite interesting, is that I can go to this text and write something nice, for example, nose, and everything will adapt immediately. This is the magic of using a procedural workflow. And you can go on and on doing this. You can grow things, uh, you can clone things, you can even use things like Voronoi's. So let's go and uh, create a torus, and this is one of the scenes I'm going to give you. Let's go to the MoGraph and get a Voronoi fracture. Let's fracture this bugger, go to the sources, and let's set this to, let's say, 300. Now, there's a nice little thing over here, the selections, and uh, you can go and say, okay, what do I want to export? I'm going to export the surface break edges, and these come up as a edge selection tag. Go and add an edge to spline. Make sure the Voronoi is the object and the selection is the selection. And now this is a spline. You can see it selected. And let's go and do something with this. Let's uh, use another sweep. And then let's take a circle. And let's put this circle in there, make it small, and use that as a child. And now we have our thickness. Isn't that fantastic? Not only that, you can select the Voronoi fracture, you can go to the geometry, glue, enable glue geometry, and add a glue falloff. In this falloff, we're going to go to the falloff tab and add a linear falloff. And now I'm controlling the fragmentation and the spline using this guy. And there you have it. Don't forget, subscribe, ring the notification bell, if you know the bell, um, comment because uh, as far as I know that feeds the YouTube algorithm and maybe my next video gets uh, 10 million views I don't know uh, share it on uh, social media and feel free to share not only the link to the video but the link to the plugin and uh, the scenes so yes thanks for watching and uh, the more support I get the more of these little tools I may be able to create because I have to pay in wisdom, and that doesn't come across very often lately.